For those of you who weren't listening, my name is Elliot Harper, and I've been working with Marketing Cloud for the past 10 years. Uh, kind of, I guess my uh, resume, I actually work for a Canadian company called Cloud Kettle, that is in Halifax um, in Canada. And uh, I, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm actually based in um, a place called Orange in New South Wales, in the middle of the country in Australia. And it's actually snowing outside. Um, bit of a kind of crazy weather out here um, coming into summer and we've got snow. Um, so, uh, yes, today I've been asked to talk about um, uh, Marketing Cloud Einstein and extension products, which um, uh, you can anticipate a, a, a couple of questions on, the, um, on this uh, exam. Um, I, I must say that uh, and stress that you don't have to um the, the the beauty about um i guess this uh, this topic is that you you certainly don't uh, need to be a subject matter expert um on the products i'm going to be explaining and uh, or um you don't actually have to have hands-on experience with using them um unlike other areas of the platform um so i you know i've actually written um, many questions for Salesforce Marketing Cloud uh, certifications and uh, um, uh, questions are generally uh, written in this, in a, what are called items written in a way that um, require you to um, to have experience. Um, and this is certainly an, an exception. Um, and uh, so, but um, I guess the objective or kind of takeaway for you is you need to understand um, what these features and applications are and what they do and how they work, um, not necessarily um, how to use them. You won't be asked curly kind of set up questions about how to go and configure them. And that's because particularly many of the extension products just aren't aren't included. You know, you have to, um, they're available as uh, um, additional uh, uh, paid optional extras, but you still need to have uh, an understanding of, um, uh, uh, understanding of what they do. So let's get on to it. So I'll just um, click next. Um, so let's start with the um, this notion of uh, extension products. I believe um, the, I uh, recall the setup section in the, uh, or the component of the exam, there's a subsection on described marketing cloud extension products. And this is a relatively new term. Um, you won't actually find extension products in marketing cloud documentation. By all means, go and search. I, last time I checked, it didn't come up. This is actually introduced when I was assisting with certification development and the, uh, more specifically, the uh, marketing cloud administration certification where um, the subject matter experts developing the certification ask the question, what are we going to call these things? <laughs> and uh, uh, and the um, term extension products was born. And there's, I need to um, uh, kind of stress here, there's a lot of ambiguity of what exactly an extension product is. Um, but, uh, you know, put uh, quite simply, these are, as we're saying, in, as I spell out on the second line here, these are platforms that aren't included in the core marketing cloud additions. Um, and uh, again, as I said before, um, you just need to be aware of what these extension products uh, do, and you're not expected to have any experience in using them. So um, let's... Uh, go through the um, list here. So we've got um, a handful of extension products. Um, and so let me go and how many, I can count six here. I'll orientate you through uh, um, these uh, six. So firstly, starting with uh, a Datarama, which of course is, has changed its name um, now. And I've, I've retained all the old um, names as the, I don't believe that the cert, uh, certification has been um, updated to reflect uh, all the, um, the new product names were um, Interaction Studios, Marketing Cloud, Personalization, and, and more. So Datarama is an end-to-end -end marketing integration and reporting platform, um, which allows you, uh, marketers to unify their data, their KPIs, um, and, uh, and share all of these, um, uh, uh, I guess, uh, marketing reports across teams and different channels. And uh, um, in short, I guess that think of Datarama as, as a marketing intelligence platform where a, a brand or agency can connect all of their campaign data um, and understand 
uh, campaign performance across Facebook and Instagram and email marketing campaigns and and much more. Um, and it kind of unifies them all together. Um, and uh, uh, so it's not just specific for um, the Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Um, and uh, there's uh, we see there's a lot of um, uh, Datarama features that now started to actually trickle into um, into marketing cloud reporting, which uh, I can cover if you want. We don't ex you you won't expect to see on the um, uh, on the exam. But in short, um, don't confuse these uh, Datarama with Datarama reports, which are now available in in Salesforce Marketing Cloud, which uh, over time will replace the um, existing report catalog for um, for reporting. It's just kind of much more powerful uh, report that comes in two different flavors. Then we have uh, GA360. Um, so with uh, GA or Google Analytics 360, um, which is a, uh, a an enterprise version of Google Analytics, that is a page version, um, uh, this GA360 connector for Marketing Cloud enables you to um, uh, do a few things. So firstly, you can um, have uh, integrated uh, content reporting within Journey Builder to see how your content is actually performing, the emails that are being sent from that journey. Um, think of it like a, a having an integrated uh, a GA dashboard right within Marketing Cloud. Um, and but more uh, specifically, um, uh, the the true power is to be able to um, share a, a GA three hundred and sixty audience. Um, expose that to marketing cloud so that is um if we can go and choose a ga360 um uh, audience as a um as an entry source and so when uh uh customers are added to that uh that audience and they're um or be injected into the journey which is a really powerful feature if you're using ga360 for segmentation um now, Interaction Studio um, is previously um, uh, is a product called Thunderhead, um, and uh, now uh, has been rebranded to or set now. Um, Salesforce went and purchased a, a platform called Evergage, and so the uh, Interaction Studio or Marketing Cloud Personalization, as we know it now, is is a, is an Evergage product, and it's a um, it enables real term personalization. So. I guess the best way to explain this is that, um, or simplest way is just as Marketing Cloud enables you to go and send personalized email campaigns and uh, social media campaigns and SMS campaigns, even personalized mobile push messages, one of the things it doesn't do out of the box is, um, is send uh, um, a, a personalized content on your corporate website. Um, and enter uh, Interaction Studio as among other things, it enables you to um, customize the actual experience and um, create business rules to determine what uh, content to display based on what you know about that website visitor. So um, based on say their browsing behavior, um, it will uh, um, determine perhaps what uh, banners or offer, uh, uh, banners or messaging to display or the products to promote on the page um, and then when that unknown visitor becomes a known visitor then um, you can uh, unify all of the that profile data together and uh, actually uh, provide a, a very rich um, personalization experience both from a, a content and also product recommendations too um, which i'll be talking about um, shortly um, next we've got um, audience studio so um, Audience Studio uh, is, um, I, I included this because I think you may expect it to be mentioned as an extension product just because of the, the refresh cycle of um, some of these certifications and uh, which varies anything from 18 months to three years. Um, so Salesforce Audience Studio was a product called Crux, then it became Salesforce DMP. And it's uh, like a customer data marketplace or uh, DMP um, to um, uh, unify all uh, first, second, and third party data from any source. Um, and uh, essentially enabling um, you to go and uh, 
target uh, individuals through um, uh, online advertising, um, and uh, uh, and it, it does that through using third-party cookies. Salesforce has um, recently announced the um, end of life of uh, Salesforce Origin Studio because of the future of um, in this. Uh, uh, cookie-less world or kind of uh, certainly without the party cookies it's not a um that you know the product um just uh, relies on having third party cookies so um if it does come up um that's what it's referring to is basically the ability to go and uh use uh, target advertising uh for you know highly personalized um audiences where you can go and say oh i want to go and um i've got this ad and i want to have foodies in Chicago um, and uh, um, you can uh, certain targeted ads. Um, um, what else do we have? Um, then uh, distributed marketing. Um, so this is a, a managed package that uh, is part or available for sales cloud um, and it enables sales cloud users to customize and send emails through marketing cloud without ever logging into marketing cloud. Um, so the way that, uh, and I, I do apologize, I've actually got um, little screenshots. So let me go and uh, advance. So the, the screenshot we're seeing here is Datarama and I should have been on the ball. And um, the next one here, um, this is a snapshot of what um, G360 integration looks like. Um, so you don't have to imagine it anymore. So here you can see um, kind of the, uh, those uh, Google Analytics, um, graphs that I talked about and uh, you can see they're conveniently available um, right from within um, a journey builder um, and again uh, I mean there's uh, you get the same graphs if you were to to log into to GA360 it's just really kind of a convenient to to have um, this reporting in one place um, and uh, what else do we have here so this is um, or boys interaction studio um but uh where uh, we can create um among other things but primarily um uh, real time um uh, personalized content on your uh, website um and uh um and this is um our audience studio a few diagram and uh, yeah so here's a um uh example of distributed marketing so um so in here you can see that it's a really kind of, uh, I guess, a, a simplified editor where um, uh, in email, so in uh, email studio you'll go and uh, add um, you know, one of three uh, custom blocks onto your template, which enables the sales cloud user to go and uh, edit and, and customize these emails, and then go and send them to. Um, uh, it could be a, a list or a campaign members who are added to a campaign. Um, and uh, uh, so I guess it's a, a, a great, um, there are many applications such as perhaps um, local area marketing, or maybe you want to, uh, uh, maybe kind of uh, sales agents have got a, a like a, a, a follow up call and want to go and send um, their on brand um uh, uh customized templates um with um kind of a, a simple level of personalization so you can have like a like personalize a, a first name and um but you can't go and write sophisticated business rules at least in this editor um so um what else do i have to say about distributed marketing and uh, on the back end um it's actually um this email is an email in a journey and you can actually have multiple emails in a journey. So um, as a user, effectively, I can go and uh, um, customize these emails. And then when I go and uh, initiate that send, it will inject those uh, leads or contacts into um, a journey, journey builder and, uh, and send them based on um, uh, the kind of a cadence that's been defined. Um, so next we have um, kind of the, the newest edition is uh, Salesforce CDP, um, which has actually now gone through uh, um, its fourth um, iteration of, of product name. So it started actually 
as Customer 360, yeah. then was quickly renamed to Customer 360 Audiences, then was renamed to Salesforce CDP. Um, and now uh, it has been renamed to Salesforce Genie. And just to clarify that, Salesforce CDP and Salesforce Genie aren't two different things. They are, they're the same thing. Uh, Genie is just a, simply an evolution of uh, CDP. And uh, it enables you to um, orchestrate data from multiple sources um, uh, such as you know, from your CRM and maybe from Marketing Cloud and um, uh, maybe from uh, your e-commerce platform um, and uh, unify um, these data, all these different data sources together to provide a number of things. So firstly, a single customer view, secondly, to empower marketers to be able to go and create segments declaratively, kind of using kind of clicks, not code, um, and then activate uh, these segments by you know, injecting them or exposing them to, for example, to marketing clouds, so they can be injected into a journey. Um, so uh, I guess in summary, it, it does uh, uh, um, data ingestion and data orchestration and segmentation um, and uh, also identity resolution um, using a combination of deterministic and probabilistic matching to, to unify these um, data sets from disparate sources uh, together. Um, so this is probably the, the newest addition to um, the Salesforce product line. The uh, CDP market is already actually quite a saturated one. Salesforce were a bit late to the market. There are 160 CDP platforms on the market, but uh, um, Salesforce's uh, latest announcement at Dreamforce of uh, Salesforce Genie um, is uh, more their, their their vision and ambition to to move to a, a, a more real time data platform as uh, today uh, segments are refreshed and identity resolution occurs every twelve hours and so they're going to be working to close the gap uh, among other kind of key announcements. So um, I, I've uh, Salesforce and I think it's just important to hone in on this again. I appreciate. And not in the context of your exam, but uh, Salesforce CDP is a very important um, um, uh, uh, strategy for Salesforce moving forward. So you can expect to see um, a lot more about uh, Salesforce CDP in the um, in the upcoming um, months and uh, years ahead. So, um, and oh, sorry, <laughs> here's a kind of screenshot of um, Salesforce CDP. But to learn more about any of these extension products I've covered please feel free to, um, uh, to just check it out on YouTube and probably give you a, a, a quick kind of two minute uh, overview of uh, um, what the products are and, and how they work. But if you can remember these, um, these bolded items here, I think you'll certainly be on the, the right path for your certification. Um, so then to, in, now let's jump into Einstein. So within Marketing Cloud, there are a number of different Einstein products and I want to firstly start off by explaining what Einstein actually is. Um, so Einstein is essentially kind of a, a marketing branding exercise. It's not some supercomputer in a Salesforce tower. You can't go and buy an Einstein from Salesforce. Um, moreover, it refers to the um, AI uh, capabilities across Salesforce products, which is a result of, um, in part, an acquisition shopping spree that Salesforce went on. Um, and uh, uh, over a few years, and then um, a, a lot of uh, existing AI-based technologies have, have been rebranded Einstein. And today in Marketing Cloud, we have a number of Einstein um, applications and features um, built into uh, into Marketing Cloud. Um, and uh, the, all these features are actually available both from the Einstein menu, and we're going to take a look at this in the live demo, and from um, the Einstein overview tab um, that we see uh, here, which uh, provides this kind of a dashboard indicating, including overview metrics for all the, or each enabled Einstein feature, and also shows you which features haven't been enabled. Um, so um, uh, what I'm going to um, be talking about is, uh, we'll be talking about covering those features, um, which include the following. <laughs> If you wouldn't mind going on mute, please, um, whoever's coughing, thank you. So um, this isn't an exhaustive list, um, uh, but these are the you know, six of the core uh, Einstein features that are available in Marketing Cloud. I'll also be touching on a few others 
um, Einstein email recommendations, web recommendations, and then some Einstein um, activities for journey builders, specifically send time optimization and uh, frequency split activity and scoring split activity. Um, as there, there may be questions, you certainly need to, to know about um, those activities, but we'll jump into journey builder and, and take a look and explore those. So firstly, let's start off with Einstein engagement frequency. So this is included in um, corporate enterprise marketing cloud editions, um, and it's also available as an option for the professional edition. So the, um, the problem that Einstein engagement frequency is trying to solve is that um, uh, you know, customers have uh, more messages in their inbox than ever before, and they want to provide their uh, marketing cloud users with a, a better way to manage their email engagement uh, strategy. And so this feature, um, the way it works, is, is it provides an insight of how many emails you should be sending to your subscribers. And um, similar to frequency capping, it allows marketers to understand the optimal number of sends and um, identify at which, which point subscribers are becoming oversaturated or at the point that they're becoming under-messaged. Essentially, it, it's identifying the sweet spot of your email to send ratio. So you can go and send the right number of messages to optimize engagement while also um, reducing the chance of email fatigue. Um, and it includes a, a dashboard that we uh, see here. We'll be looking a bit more closely to look at uh, send frequency and engagement trends and the distribution of email sends and subscriber engagement over time. Um, and it uh, um, also um, enables you to um, uh, control who can be included and excluded from being sent emails. And this works in conjunction with um, engagement frequency activity that we'll be looking in uh, in Journey Builder. So why would you um, use this feature? Well, look, in summary, it helps marketers to reduce their unsubscribe rate by identifying oversaturated subscribers and also tap into additional sales opportunities by finding undersaturated subscribers. Uh, so um, this feature isn't enabled by default. You need to go and activate it in each required business unit by um, clicking on, by opening up um, uh, uh, the uh, Einstein engagement frequency button. And when you do so for the first time, you'll see this uh, um, screenshot here um, uh, with a, a big blue button. And that's all you have to do is you just click on that button and then um, it's activated. And the activation process requires up to 72 hours to complete. Um, again, this assumes that you're um, currently sending out emails to your customers. Um, and uh, if you're not, then it will uh, kind of take uh, take longer to um, to learn, uh, I, I guess, uh, engagement uh, um, uh, history. Uh, but you'll need like uh, 30 days of, uh, of email send data. So I just want to go and give a quick demo. And for some odd reason, I've closed the tab. So let me go and um, open up um, Marketing Cloud. Hopefully I'm still logged in. Um, I am. Good. Okay. Yeah, yep. you're logging into Marketing Cloud. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, I'm logged into Marketing Cloud. So um, to get started, we're going to head over to Einstein um, Engagement Frequency from, uh, where are you? Um, engagement Frequency, so I can't read today, <laughs> um, from the Einstein menu in Marketing Cloud. And so the way that this works is that uh, it uh, analyzes uh, email engagement data from the last four weeks. Um, this feature has kind of uh, changed quite a bit over the past um, past year. Um, but what we see here on this dashboard is this bar and histogram chart of um, email engagement as a function of, uh, of email sends. And you can see that uh, over the past four weeks for all the commercial emails that have been sent, and I want to stress here, it doesn't work for, it's not for transactional emails because transactional emails kind of skew the statistics and uh, um, so we're just really interested in commercial emails of um, we can identify out of uh, all of the sends we've got it's actually very good we can see that uh, um, the vast majority of uh, like a, a 99 percent are actually on target um, that uh, we're, we've that's a perfect sweet spot however we've got um, you know 
uh, almost 74,000 contacts who are oversaturated receiving too many emails and uh, a smaller proportion who are undersaturated. Um, and then um, it can give uh, give um, advice of how to go and uh, how many emails you should be sending in the, the next week based on these values here. Um, so this is just more of a, um, uh, uh, so saturated on, on target and um, just uh, just more of a, um, a dashboard kind of for reporting purposes. To go and action this, we'll have to go and jump into um, to Journey Builder. Now, for those of you actually who are familiar with this feature, um, and in fact, maybe in your account, you've had the, um, the feature enabled for some time. Um, it used to create two data extensions um, of saturated, oversaturated, and undersaturated subscribers, um, which you could then use for sending, um, which is actually, I found very useful to have all that raw data at your fingertips. But um, that's changed, it's not available now. Um, and instead, um, if we just go to uh, find uh, maybe this re-engagement campaign here. Um, it's instead where you now use a uh, Einstein engagement frequencies uh, split activity. And so here we can see that uh, um, we can uh, route uh, contacts down one of these paths based on whether they're receiving uh, too many or too few emails or um, um, whether they're saturated. So they're becoming too saturated, for example, where um, in this case, um, uh, delaying sending that email. Um, and uh, or in effect, delaying, we're sending them a, uh, a, looks like an SMS message instead. So um, uh, yes, that's Einstein engagement frequency. So moving on to Einstein engagement scoring. So um, EES or Einstein engagement scoring is a predictive segmentation tool for Marketing Cloud that predicts how your audience is going to engage with your marketing campaigns and programs over the next two weeks or 14 days. Now, once you can predict what a, an individual is going to do, then you can go and segment your target audience and personalize that content to make it more effective. And effectively, this, uh, this app provides three key benefits. So firstly, it enables you to discover what customers are going to do next. Essentially, the way it works is that Einstein will score every individual subscriber based on their likelihood to open an email, you know, click through, stay subscribed and, and convert. So next we can gain audience insights by understanding factors that uh, predict engagement and identify trends and measure your audience health. So you can see how you're engaging with your audience and how they're engaging with you. And finally, it provides actionable data through creating um, individually addressable segments, which are organized into target personas. And we can go and action these personas um, using uh, a, a, an activity in Journey Builder, which routes customers down there at the right path based on the persona and their predicted behavior. So we can optimize the journey for each individual contact. So similar to um, Einstein engagement frequency, this feature is activated at business unit level is not activated by default, but you simply, when you open the feature, you're presented with this uh, blue button, you click on it um, and, uh, and then it will start the learning process. And it does require um, at least a thousand events in the past 90 days before activation. So if you're new to Marketing Cloud, it could take up to 90 days to generate some initial scores. Otherwise, these scores are typically available within 24 to 48 hours and it will send you an email notification once, um, well, once it's ready to use. So let's go and um, have a look at uh, Einstein engagement scoring then. Um, so Einstein engagement scoring, um, so similar to Einstein engagement frequency, um, this uh, Einstein engagement scoring page is just really a, a dashboard. So we can kind of see at a glance of um, a kind of like a health check, I guess. Um, and then we can, uh, um, uh, engage these uh, personas um, through a split activity in Journey Builder. Um, very similar um, to the engagement frequency one. Um, so what we have here is um, uh, uh, so one second. Um, uh, we see this dashboard 
that provides an insight of engagement scoring. So the, we've got um, four different personas, which are um, listed up here. So there's dormant, Wimback, window shopper, selector, subscriber, and loyalists. Um, and uh, then we can uh, see how they're kind of uh, distributed uh, kind of uh, over how these uh, personas have changed um, over time. And, um, and then on these uh, different uh, tiles here, these kind of prediction cards, I call them, um, provide an overview of our audience health, along with their likelihood to go and open an email. And we can um, actually go and uh, uh, drill down to each kind of prediction and uh, see all of the different factors that uh, influence that prediction. So I'll just go back to, to here, um, like their, um, like influencing their um, prediction, their likelihood to click, and uh, and how those um, the, those scores are, are correlated. Um, and if we go back to the front, uh, so we go back to the uh, first one here. Um, we can see. Um, oh, we and um, they just changed us just from second. Um, oh, yeah, if you okay, they changed it to ten. You used to have the first. Oh no, no, you you do have the first. You see the top five negative. And the top five positive correlations um, for each of these predictions. Um, so, um, and then you know you can go and uh, I can maybe click on view all and discover the reasons that's causing subscribers to become more or less engaged. Like perhaps it's based on the email name, for example, um, or uh, you know um, uh, maybe the subscription period um in this case uh, the likelihood to open um and again uh in order to go in this is just really uh, like an analytics kind of a overview you can't configure um the the scoring tool at all um and uh it's available as a you can then go and target any of these personas using the uh, split activity in in journey builder i don't actually have a journey that um uses um the uh, scoring split activity in this um, instance. So now I'm going to skip on to Einstein Messaging Insights and Marketing Cloud. Um, so this uh, feature is available in all editions, or in fact, apart from basic, just professional corporate and enterprise marketing cloud editions. And um, what the way this works is that it provides anomaly detection for email marketers through a, a notification center. And you've probably already seen the kind of Einstein icon at the top, um, a kind of a, a ribbon in Marketing Cloud, um, which, which enables marketers to review irregularities in, in KPIs. So I know there's a sudden drop in email engagement, like in opens, clicks, or unsubscribe rates, then Einstein Messaging Insights surfaces these insights um, on your marketing cloud dashboard and the insights are updated daily so um, they're not reliant on someone receiving a like a a, a scheduled report it's just uh, when you log into marketing cloud you can see them so you know why would you use this einstein messaging insights well let's just dis discuss a, a scenario so perhaps you've got this I don't know, abandoned cart journey that's been running for some time, but there's been an update to dark mode for iOS, which has impacted click-through rates from these devices because the, the link isn't visible or the design doesn't work as well in, in dark mode. So in this scenario, Einstein um, would send a notification directly to the notification center for that past 24 hour period, saying that there's been a sudden drop in click activity. So you can go and identify the cause and intervene and apply updates to the email to ensure that um, its performance level, level stays or increases. So um, I guess in a nutshell, it enables you to marketers to stay on top of email performance insights and then use those provided insights to optimize journeys and batch sends. It, it doesn't intervene itself. It's just uh, really um, providing a, a reporting Let's go and take a look at um, how it works. I'm going to go and uh, open up Einstein Messaging Insights from, from here. Um, and, uh, um, oh no, in fact, sorry, right from the dashboard so we can see it here. Um, there's the little widget I see um, I was talking about. I can see um, all of our um, 
uh, all, all of our um, messages, uh, any unread messages, I'll have a little kind of number indicating and how many I've got to go and check on on a notification center. So, um, so we can see at a glance the anomaly that Einstein's detected. Um, and then, or uh, we can just jump into Einstein uh, messaging insights to have this view here. So let's go and jump in and, and take a look at uh, one of these. Uh, what have we got going on here? So there's a um, uh, low unsubscribe rate, high unsubscribe, higher unsubscribe rate, rate for this uh, post purchase journey. So um, that's uh, a bit concerning. So um, let's go and have a look at what could be causing this. So this histogram we see here provides a trend over time and indicates how our journey is performing and all the email activities in the journey, of which we can see there are three here, um, and uh, how the performance relates to each other, um, along with a, a median for that, uh, for that journey. So, um, and the, the table below um, shows us uh, summary data related to each email activity in the journey. So we've got this uh, uh, unsub unsubscribe column here to show the number of unsubscribes divided by the number of delivered messages um, before the, on the day before the anomaly was detected. And then there's a, um, this uh, uh, column, this change here. So this indicates the percentage of change in the email unsubscribe rate compared to the day before the anomaly was detected. And finally, we have an influence um, column, um, which uh, reflects the predicted impact on the journey, which is determined by uh, many factors like send volume and uh, percentage of change percentage. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so kind of a, 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 at a glance, it enables us to, um, to to see to flag that there's there's an issue, so we can go and uh, start to look at uh, what what could be the cause of that. Um, so let's go and take a look at a different one here. There's a high open rate. Um, so here we can see in this uh, um, in this journey here, there are a couple of emails um, and uh, um, uh, yeah, so we can see that uh, the um, this is 22.2% higher than expected. And of course, there could be a, a number of um, uh, causes, um, such as uh, maybe it's a seasonal thing, or maybe it's a, a price drop, a new offer. Um, but anyway, it kind of uh, surfaces these insights at a glance. So you don't have to go and write complex um, queries to go and uh, to get these insights. That's Einstein messaging insights. Um, and messaging, I, I think it's fair to say, um, it's email messaging. <laughs> so um, email, Einstein email insights, I think would have been a, a more um, appropriate name. Next, we have Einstein copy insights. Um, and this is included in, um, in all editions in, in Marketing Cloud, um, apart from basic. Um, and uh, it provides this uh, dashboard that um, uh, helps identify the language that drives engagement, and we can have a look at uh, um, how effective um, subject lines and and the words that are used in those lines are to um, and and how they go and uh, impact engagement. Um, Einstein Copy Insights, its name is a bit misleading. Perhaps this is maybe a a nod to um, the direction of uh, where Salesforce wants to take this product, but it's um, really Einstein's subject line insights. Um, as uh, you know, the subject line is essentially the what encourages the subscriber to open the envelope, um, but it, it doesn't uh, strictly go and um, provide um, insights into the actual content within your email. Let's go and take a look at uh, Einstein Copy Insights in action. So I'm just going to open up Einstein Copy Insights here. Let's wait for it to load. Um, so we see this, I've um, uh, got a, a, a dashboard here um, to that goes and helps marketers identify the language that's driving engagement. So we've got uh, this top table here. We can see the top performing and most frequently used subject lines at a glance. 
um, and we can compare how the subject lines uh, perform against each other. Uh, uh, quite a, um, a recent new feature as well is rather than just being a, a, a reactive tool, we can actually go and test um, a subject line and uh, um, check how that is going to perform through this uh, um, test and will come up with a, um, a confidence level. So for example, um, uh, uh, we're very sorry. Um, let me go and test that one. <laughs> Um, and you can even go compare um, that. So you can see that we're very sorry it has a um, uh, as an average score. So it's probably um, the uniqueness is high. Or so, or just the interface is kind of gone a bit screw whip. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, anyway, so uh, it enables you to go and oh, so that, that that's quite a kind of uh, a useful feature. Before you go and send an email, you can see how it's going to perform. What, um, let's talk about the other tiles here. So we've got a language factor insights tile here, um, which uh, measures a negative or positive effect along with the degree of effect. Um, and when all of these three circles are filled here, um, that uh, this represents the, um, uh, the, the most positive effect. Um, so, and in this case, uh, we can see all three circles are filled based on the originality, which refers to using unique words in subject line. Um, and, um, and also it has exclamation mark. Um, it has a very strong positive impact. The emotional tone um, insights panel here predicts the emotional response to your subject lines based on a multi-label classification model. So in this bubble chart we see here, we can see that by including words words like um, love has a very strong positive impact, but um, uh, 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 words such as anticipation um, has a um, has a negative impact. Um, so you should probably avoid that here, like sadness. Um, and top performing phrases um, indicates uh, single words or phrases that have a directly have a positive or negative impact on your open rate, like. Um, we can see free shipping is a very positive impact here. Um, and uh, um, so marketers can then go and uh, use this dashboard to learn from these insights and optimize subject lines in their email marketing campaigns uh, accordingly. So next we have Einstein content tagging. Um, so let me talk about uh, um, this feature. So image libraries can kind of quickly get disorganized and become quite unwieldy. And uh, you know, in order to go and uh, catalog your images, um, manual image tagging is very time consuming and is, a, is quite a subjective process, right? Um, and it can be really challenging to locate all of the rele relevant images from often a, a big pool or ocean of assets. Um, it can be like finding a polar bear in a snowstorm. So this typically leads to content fatigue where marketers often revert to using um, the same image in their email content regularly um, just because they can find it. Now, Einstein content tagging, uh, the way it works is it automates image tagging by using machine learning to enrich your image assets with tags and builds a searchable content library. Um, so you can easily find the most relevant images for your message. Um, so the way that uh, um, this works is that uh, you can go, oh, I've got a screenshot, there we go. Um, oh, uh, there we go. I don't know why that's kind of offset there, but um, it will automatically go and look for, it actually uses the Google Vision API to look for um, elements in the image, such as um, sea and sky, um, and uh, sorry, it's a bit of a mess here. I'm not quite sure. That, um, sea and sky, and uh, maybe a boat, and will um, apply those tags to the image automatically. Um, and uh, you can activate Einstein content tagging from setup by selecting turn on Einstein content tagging, as you can see in the screenshot here. Um, and you can also uh, choose to automatically use all content builder images or just those in the Einstein content tagging folder. So this is a folder which is automatically created when the feature is enabled. Um, and you can also configure how many tags you want, per maximum number of tags per image and, and configure confidence level. So it is kind of um, configurable um, 
uh, within the setup menus. So it's uh, again, it's all included um, in Marketing Cloud and uh, provides a, a very convenient way to to find the, these images. Um, so I'll quickly go and um, I'll, maybe before we move into content selection, we can quickly go and have a look at uh, Einstein. Can we have a look at Einstein content tagging? Um, no, I can't in here, but we're going to have a look, maybe email studio. Um, I can't show you the setup on this account, um, but uh, maybe we'll just jump to um, content builder. In this case, I'll access content builder from email studio and uh, we might see um, some images that have been tagged with uh, uh, Einstein content tagging. So by default, they've got a, uh, a, a prefix that you can go and change. Let's go and find our tags. So let's say, maybe go to load. Um, no, it's going to be filtering um, tags. There we go. So uh, we can filter on clothing and maybe um, show more. So here's all the different uh, EC tags there, um, uh, prefix with uh, Marketing Cloud ECT, I said content tagging. So you want um, backpack and backpacking and bag and baggage. So now it's going to return all the images that have been automatically tagged with this. So it's, uh, and, you can see you it's, um, yes. Wait, uh, so can you zoom in a bit? Uh, we're not able to see it clearly. Of course, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's just um, it basically will automatically tag tag your images so you can uh, discover them in content over here. So um, next, uh, Einstein content selection. Um, so Einstein content selection delivers um, the best content that's suited for each subscriber when an email is sent based on a variety of factors. Um, and it helps to optimize email engagement and click-through rates. Uh, so when you go and begin sending, Einstein will go and choose the best asset for each customer email. Um, and when I say asset, it's specifically image assets. So it should be called Einstein image selection. But uh, um, again, maybe I didn't come up with the name. Um, and uh, it will go and uh, um, choose the, the most appropriate asset um, that a subscriber um, will result in a subscriber's click through. Um, and as the subscribers are opening your messages, Einstein is looking at click results to identify specific assets that continually contribute to increased click rates. And um, so it's looking, it will find assets that prompt customers to click on a link in the email and then will um, uh, prioritize or kind of favoritize that asset over uh, more frequently over um, future sends. Um, so um, the way that uh, this works, I let me go and have, have a look into here. Um, I can show you part of uh, um, uh, the feature. I'll go to Einstein um, content selection here. Um, it's actually uh, really um, uh, there, there's a setup uh, configuration where you go and uh, um, configure all of your profile attributes and your selection rules, which are uh, aren't available on this account and you certainly don't need to know about them in the context of the um, uh, your exam um, but uh, it's a good info video explaining kind of what it does there um, but here I should be able to see all of my um, view all my assets here so I've got this uh, asset pool of all, all of my different assets here and uh, um, uh, the assets are, are tagged here and I can go and create um asset groups um, and uh, in this or, or classes. Um, so you've got this notion of uh, like, uh, maybe I want a web banner and you've got um, different attributes. And so based on um, uh, a, a subscriber attributes, um, so you've got a, a data extension containing subscriber attributes together with click activity, it will go and uh, choose um, uh, a specific image at open time from that asset pool and, and display that image um, in your email. Um, a couple of things to note. Uh, so firstly, um, you can go and set expiration dates on these assets. 
may be good if you all access, you'll see when they're going to expire. Oh, there we go, created update, start and end. You can see this one has an expiration date. Um, you can go and specify there's a, um, you know, a, a, a fallback asset. So if the asset pool is exhausted or maybe they've all, all expired, then it will, you want to display a fallback image. Um, so it really um, kind of changes, I guess, how you uh, manage your content rather than choosing um, uh, which image should I include in this email? If you're asking the question, do I have enough as images in my asset pool, you know, um, for my email sends? Um, that's Einstein content selection. Um, so before we um, move on to questions, as I promised, I just want to touch on um, a couple of other Einstein features, and that's specifically um, uh, uh, um, Einstein, um, or one Einstein activity I didn't mention is STO or send time optimization. And we can see um, this activity peppered around here. Uh, Einstein send time optimization is um, you, you add it to your um, journey canvas before an email activity. And rather than um, waiting for a specific duration, it will, um, it will uh, delay sending that email and, and until a point when that specific subscriber is most likely to open their email that's based on their um, historic data. So it's probably not that useful for a, a welcome email, although it will use a kind of a generic model because you know it's really best for customers who um, uh, has um, have been opening emails over time. So you can see, when they're most likely to open their email so that that email is at their top of the inbox and they're above the fold, which can obviously impact open rates too. Um, and this is configurable from anything from, um, you know, I think hours to, to seven days. So that is, you know, let's say that um, uh, it, it could, you could go, while you can go and say, set that, um, or you can go and delay sending this email for up to four days, for example, or seven days. Um, it may be that uh, this is a time sensitive offer where the customer has to respond in 24 hours. So you can say that, uh, you know, delay sending this email for up to, to 24 hours or 12 hours or kind of uh, whatever threshold you want to find there. Uh, so it's yeah, very, very straightforward. You simply drag it to the, to the canvas and you can configure it. Um, I'm just going to crack this open. It won't, uh, in specific, or um, let me go and change any of the settings, but. Uh, um, oh, here I can go and see that uh, um, how that um, activity is actually performing over time. Um, the other um, feature I want to um, mention is uh, Einstein uh, email and web recommendations. So this is a um, these are as this kind of a product that Exact Target actually purchased uh, ten years ago um, from a company called iGo Digital. Um, and enables you to um, include product recommendations and also content recommendations, but primarily um, product recommendations in in your emails and on your website. Um, and uh, so uh, it's really designed for um, e-commerce uh, customers who have um, a large number of products and companion products. Um, and based on the web pages they're viewing and uh, um, the, the the scenarios that uh, that you um, feed it will determine which products they're they're recommending. Um, I, I don't believe you uh, this will uh, kind of appear in the exam, but uh, and it's it's really not a strategic direction for Salesforce. It's um it still exists. There are a couple of features in Marketing Cloud which actually use that kind of the the product catalog behind this feature, including Einstein engagement scoring. Um, but uh, um, uh, all of these kind of product recommendation features, both in email and, and on web, can be achieved with Interaction Studio, now Marketing Cloud Personalization, which actually provides uh, a much more deeper, more comprehensive um, recommendation engine um, than uh, this one here, which really hasn't been touched since the acquisition. You can see the, the interface is, uh, is very different, um, but it's exactly the same for email and web. Basically, web recommendations is if you want to surface product recommendations on a website. Email recommendations is include product recommendations in the email. Um, 
and uh, you can create these different kind of zones and define how many recommendations you want to display in that zone. Um, but uh, that's what uh, those two um, uh, list items of the Einstein menu refer to. Well, hopefully that's been a helpful overview of um, Einstein features and extension products. Um, and I just want to stress, as I mentioned at the start of the um, session, is that uh, you're not expected to have any hands-on experience, but uh, just understand um, what these products do um, and uh, when you might want to use them. Um, and there's actually uh, many kind of comprehensive videos by Salesforce on, on YouTube if you want to um, learn about these uh, products a bit more. Um, but you know whether you're um, studying for the exam or if you even you know, perhaps you, you go and uh, uh, um, pass the exam, which I hope you do, um, I do encourage you to start to explore um, uh, these Einstein features because they're um, they're so easy to enable. Um, you no, know, you don't. There's really nothing to learn, and uh, they're extremely powerful. Can provide some some really powerful insights to uh, to increase your um, email engagement. So please uh, um, check them out. So um, at this stage, I'll just open up for questions. Thank you, thank you very much, Elliot. Uh, this there has been a lot of learning today. And not everybody uses uh, the Einstein features, so it's very good to know what they are capable of doing and how we can benefit from those. So the questions, I see uh, one question in the chat. Is content tagging also included in professional corp and enterprise edit editions? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yes, good question. Um, I am 99% sure it is. It's available in, yeah in all editions apart from basic. I don't know if they often even, uh, but they offer basic um, editions still. So, um, which is, um, uh, if, you, if you're using Marketing Cloud basic edition, you may as well be using MailChimp because it doesn't uh, let you do too much. But uh, yes, it's the, um, I'm pretty sure it's available in, in professional upwards. That's great. And also, I believe they're all self-activation, um, so no need to get in touch with the support. We can activate them by ourselves. That's right, yeah. All those features um, are just all self-activated. Okay. Yeah, um, business unit level. Um, well, Einstein content tagging, I think that's actually at an enterprise level, that's from setup, but uh, other than the business unit level. And the next question is regarding the email and web recommendations. Um, you mentioned yes. somewhere in the session itself. Uh, so can you uh, repeat that? Uh, what was the better and more updated version of email and web recommendations? Interaction Studio, um, what was Evergage and is now Marketing Cloud Personalization, which includes um, uh, 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 almost identical features really, uh, particularly for um, the email recommendations where you essentially kind of copy and paste code. Um, but I I can see that we'll have a, a more integrated experience um, in the near future. But uh, um, look, I, I, you know, if, you've, um, if you want to play around and get started with product recommendations, I go, uh, you, you can do that out of the box. It's available for, um, so let me think out loud. Email recommendations is available out of the box for professional edition upward. Um, uh, web recommendations for servicing recommendations on your website is for corporate edition and, and enterprise edition um, with a kind of a, a, a paid option for professional uh, edition. Um, but uh, like I said, it's, it, it, it is quite primitive in comparison to the capabilities of what was Evergage. Um, and uh, but if to, to get started for free, give it a go. It's all um, self-serve. You don't need a, a professional services engagement. It's kind of got a, a set through wizard. Um, I, I would stress that uh, it's really um, used for product or content recommendations where you have hundreds or thousands of the, uh, products. So I have one customer who actually sold lottery um, products. And so uh, you know, you've got 12 products. It's not going to... Uh, you might as well write some AM script to, to go and uh, 
um, uh, recommend a kind of a, a product. But if I've got, um, yeah, it's like I said, well suited for e-commerce, um, like a retailer, it can be used for other industries, and I've used it for, um, uh, gosh, um, for travel um, as an example. But uh, um, there are just some kind of nuances of, of uh, how to configure it. Um, and uh, how to essentially configure your tags. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps. Thanks, thanks much, Elliot. And everyone, any other questions, please, uh, any, any questions related to the email specialist related topics. This is the last session, uh, topic session in this bootcamp. And we have one more that is related to the practice test and test taking strategies. So this is your last chance to ask uh, Elliot if you have any questions. And um, I will, I'm just going to go and post this to one second to everyone in the meeting. Uh, there we go. Um, I'm going to post this to, um, this is my link to my blog, my video blog on um, kind of tips and working marketing cloud uh, videos that I've created. And down the bottom, you see there's a button to schedule a call. This is an open invitation to, to anyone. If you have a question about marketing cloud, anything you, I've covered today or anything marketing cloud in general that you can't find on the forums or anywhere else please just uh, reach out to me i'd be happy to have a, a chat for 30 minutes and uh, um yeah and hopefully you find that uh, that link helpful as well some good answers on that's definitely helpful and very nice of you to extend your support Elliot. getting time from you is very very uh, valuable for anybody so thank you for that and i think those are all the questions that we have and everyone any other questions please post them in the chat uh, slack channel and we are active on the slack channel after the boot camp as well so you can utilize that as uh, as a way to get your questions answered and we thank everyone and thank you elliot for joining and spending your time with us today thank you cheers thank you bye have a good one everyone bye